Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about multi-step workflow in GitHub Actions. When people start learning GitHub Actions, they always seem to have one step that does a bunch of things. It's not how you do it. So I just want to show you a real simple example, really simple example of a workflow that's got eight different steps in it. And it's a good example of how to structure your GitHub action workflows when you actually do some, some serious continuous integration and deployment. When people get started with GitHub actions, you usually see bland workflows that look something like this. You know, you've got your steps listed here. You know, you do a checkout of your code. Um, you know, maybe you pull in the right version of the JDK and then maybe you run a single line command here or use the multi-line command step in order to run a bunch of different commands at the same time. This isn't a good idea. That's not the way you're supposed to structure your workflow. So I want to give you an example of how to structure a multi-step GitHub action workflow and how one might work. Now I'm just working with a repository that's got nothing in it other than a readme file. So I'm not going to be building a Maven or Jekyll or Bootstrap application or something like that right now. I'm just going to create something that's very, very simple with multiple steps that might emulate what you would have if you actually had a complicated Node or Java or Jakarta build. And so here's a, a much better workflow than this one right here. Now imagine uh, a typical workflow. What would you do? Well, uh, you're going to you know, have the name of the workflow and you're going to have it triggered anytime that somebody pushes something to the main branch. So that's just standard stuff. You can see I'm going to run this on an Ubuntu container. Now, when you say runs on, the GitHub Actions environment will configure a runner that will run exclusively on that particular container. So if you actually want to run on different containers, you have to set up a, a different sort of run on, you have to set up a different job for different containers. But if you've got a bunch of steps that are all going to run on the same container, what you do is you break them down. You don't have one big multi-step. You break down each of the different I don't know what you want to call them, phases or instructions or, or groups of activities into separate steps. And so here we go right here. So here's the listing of steps. Step one, maybe do some logging about your environment. Here I've run the df command, which tells you how much disk space is available in your environment. Now we're using a container. I don't know if we're going to run out of disk space. I don't know if that's a concern, but maybe at the beginning of your build, you might set a timer, you know, might help you keep track of how long the builds are taking. My idea here is that at the first step, I'm going to log the disk space. And then the last step, I'm going to log the disk space again. That'll give me a delta. So maybe there's some other factor you want a delta on. So you might configure a first step, something like that, to do logging. Then we get into the real business here. We actually have a checkout action that gets played. Uh, that will check out all of the code in our main branch. Then maybe we want to use Java 1.8. I don't know why we would want to use an old long-term release. You probably should be using Java 11, but this sets up the JDK. Then maybe we've got a Jakarta web application. Step number four might be to build that application. Now I actually don't have a Jakarta application in this environment, so I'm just going to echo the command that you would use. But if this was a Maven based Java project, that wouldn't be an echo. That would be the actual command. Now let's say the code base not only has a Jakarta web application, but also has a native Android app. So maybe step five is to build the Android app. And so here I'm just going to echo out the Android at Android SDK environment variable location, but you could do all of the building of your application that you might like. Now these builds typically run not only compile the code, but run the unit tests. Sometimes you have to do some extra Selenium testing or user interface testing. So maybe step number six might be to actually run the Android app and run the web app and actually do some Selenium testing on it. So here I'm just referencing the Selenium jar file that's available in this image. Um, but you could actually write some commands here that actually do that Selenium testing. Now let's say all of this is successful. We might want to actually just log what versions of Git, Maven, Ant, Gradle we used in this. This might just help us in the future if, you know, all of a sudden something changes. It's like, hey, what version of Maven were we using there? What version of Gradle were we using in that GitHub Actions workflow? 
And then finally I said, you know, we were going to log the disk space at the beginning. Maybe we'll log the disk space at the end. Maybe you'll set a timer at the beginning. Maybe you'll set a timer at the end. And all of these will, you can then use the delta to find out some information about the build. And so this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different steps, each of which is logical. Now we could have put these all together in a single multi-step, you know, kind of like we did over here. But I mean, you can see the value in organizing this, right? That's what you want to do with your workflows, actually organize logical steps together. And that makes things easier if things fail too, because then you can actually say, oh, it was step number five that failed. Um, you can concentrate your, your interest, your activities, your troubleshooting on that particular step. Now let's run that. Um, I'm actually just run this a second ago. I'm going to go take a look at this multi-step GitHub action. And when you take a look at the build process here, you can see all of the different steps. So setting up the job, um, step one was the pre-build disk space. Uh, setting up the job was done by uh, the GitHub environment. This was my first step. You can see that just gives us information about the disk space, kind of cool there. A little checkout of the main branch there. So you can actually see Git is doing all of its interesting stuff here as it does the cloning and does the initialization. Very cool. And then down here, you see the other steps, right? Setting up the JDK, building the Jakarta environment with the web app. And I would just echo that out, but you could actually run that command. Here's Selenium, we could play with that. We actually see that that Selenium jar file is there for the taking if you want. Logging the different build tool versions. One thing I don't like about the GitHub environment is the, the user interface. It always makes me scroll up here. Um, but there you go, we did the version of the different tools. And you can see how this is just nicely set up with all of these different jobs, very easy to go in and, and just kind of inspect and, and take a look at. There's the, the final disk space after we've done all of our builds. And you'll notice also that with certain actions, there are post steps. So in one of the steps, we said we were gonna set up the JDK. I think that was this step right here. Now that's actually configured by using an action and actions have post steps. So after step number three is completed and all of the other steps are run, it does its teardown. And so that's what we're getting the post step three from that uh, Java action. And then of course there was the GitHub action and then it has a, a post step as well. And here's post step two, which is cleaning up after all of the GitHub stuff is done. So there's a post job cleanup right there. And then a little information that the job is complete. But there you go, that just gives you an idea of what a proper GitHub workflow might look like. You know, you don't stuff everything into just one uh, run on section. Uh, what you wanna do is actually build a nice workflow with multiple steps in it. And there you go, that's how multi-step workflows work in GitHub Actions. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there, and we got lots of great articles on Git, GitHub, enterprise software development, DevOps, you name it. Also, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ, and subscribe on YouTube.